of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Share it together. We are all God's 
and is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God. There is also one mediator between God and humankind. Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For this I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth. I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we have one out in 
Snyder Hall. We have a blower issue over there. <laughs> it's always something, isn't it? Do you know that your management material, your management material, I bet you've never thought about that, have you? You probably just thought, well, you know, I'm just a regular member of the church. I come and, you know, I worship. I do what I can. But, you know, the pastor kind of runs the place, and so does the council. And, you know, I'm just a regular person. But our gospel lesson tells us something totally, totally different. That we're more than that. We're a manager. And what does that mean? Now, I don't know how many of you have been in management. But that means you take care of other things. You oversee usually other people and other departments sometimes. It depends on what that position means. But a manager is meaning you manage people, you manage things, you manage the operation, the day-to-day -day operations of the organization. And that doesn't always happen, does it? That's why nobody wants to serve on council, right? No one wants to manage the day-to-day out. -day. We'll leave that up to pastor because he's there, you know, and we, he's the one that I've always been told for almost 46 years, but you know, that's why we pay you for, for you to manage the place. Well, my parents used to say, you know, Gary, that's passing the buck. <laughs> We're all managers. And I want to go all the way back to the beginning, the book of Genesis. Do you remember that one? That one you usually know. It's the first book in the Bible, if you don't know. Genesis means beginning. And in that book, God outlines for us what? The story of the beginning. How this all began. I mean, pretty, pretty vividly. Day by day. It took seven days, and each day he created something, and each day he said it was very good. But at the end of all of that story of creation, what happens? God says to us, to God's people, it's now your turn. I'm turning it over to you. Do you remember that part of it? Most of us don't. But he says to us, if you don't remember the scripture, be fruitful and multiply and have dominion over the earth. Do you recall that portion of it at all? Now, dominion means to manage, to take care of, to oversee, to do something with what God has given you. And so we see in our lesson what's going to happen to us. Because it gives us a peek of what's going to happen. Here the master calls his manager and says, you know, manager, you're not doing a good job here. Give an accounting. Sound familiar? Does it sound familiar? If it doesn't, it should, because what's going to happen, you know, like in everything, is you're going to have to give an accounting. Now, I know most of you don't do well in math. Most people don't. That's why nobody wants to be the treasurer, right? We don't do well in math. But we have to give an accounting. Now, I know some of you know I was a VA chaplain, worked in the government for 20 years, and talk about accounting. We had reviews every six months where the chief of the service would call you in. The six month review was pretty, you're doing satisfactory, you're okay. But the yearly thing is a great big three or four page thing. You know, did you do this and did you do that? And you know, did you do that, you know? And if you did, you got rewarded. It's amazing, man. It's amazing, you know, in the government when you do your job, you get a bonus. <laughs> Wonderful, right? And if you don't do your job well, you, you, you keep the same salary, you just don't get the bonus. Well, they've done away with that over the years, which 
makes a lot of sense to me. But we will be having to give an accounting of what we've done. How have we managed what God has left us, what God has given us? And you know, God has given us a lot. And this lesson talks, the manager said, what am I going to do? You know, and finally he starts to act like a manager. Apparently he was, part of his management was collections. And so he, he goes to his office and he looks up the people that owe his master some money that haven't paid and said to them, well, what do you owe? And most of them said, well, I owe a hundred. He said, well, write, write 50. And he said, fine, I'll pay that. And he went to the other one, he said, it's 100, we'll write 80, and I'll pay that. And the text then says, you know, the owner was thankful that the manager was so shrewd. And the text there goes on to tell us that why aren't the people of God as shrewd? Now, you may think that's a little odd, right? that God would say we should be shrewd in our dealings with people. But what God is saying to us is once again, we need to, to go to people and not beat them over the head and saying, you owe me a hundred, give me a hundred. But be a little bit more merciful, a little bit more compassionate, a little bit more forgiving, a little bit more loving. Now, it's called shrewd in the text, but that's what it's about. God has given us this wonderful creation, this wonderful building, this wonderful land, our wonderful families, our wonderful homes. God has given this all to us. And all that God is saying to us is manage it for me. Just take care of it. And if you take care of it, you know, things will go well. And yet we don't take care of it, do we? I'm saying the world. I'm not pointing anyone out. I'm just saying we don't take very good care of what God has given us. Let me give you an example. Our children. Now, I'm not once again pointing anyone out here, but when you look at the world, look at it. You know, I've shared it with you. Lutheran Services of Florida. We've got seven homes right here in this area of disposable children, ages 10 to 17, that nobody wants. And so Lutheran Services takes care of them until they're 18. We don't take care of our families very well. We don't take care of creation very well. And I don't know why, I guess we expect everyone else to do it, or I know all of you do it. I know you all do, but it doesn't stop there. You must go out and teach others to do it. That this is God's creation, that God has given us this wonderful creation and we are to take care of it. We are to be the managers of it. Now the lesson then ends with the word money, which is once again, I guess that whole text wasn't talking much about money. I guess it was, but collecting debts, but it says you cannot serve God and money. Some of the text says mammon, which means money, but you can't serve two gods. We actually can't serve more than one God. God wants it all. God, once again, wants us to manage what God has given us. And yet we let the world and the things of the world interrupt and take over. And it goes up to the top priority. See, God wants to be number one on the top of our list. And that's why he says here, or the scripture says in Luke, why Luke says to us, you can't serve God and money, because you can't serve two gods. And the reason they use the word money is because what? Well, as the text tells us, time and time, money is the root of all evil, right? Let me give you another example, Judas. So sold out the life of his best friend for 30 pieces of silver. Pretty cheap, huh? 
dirty cheek. And who of us doesn't like money? I like it. It's nice. Right? It can buy us things that, but once again, it has a tendency, even in my life, to kind of discover my world, to get in the way of my relationship with God. Because there's times when I think, well, you know, I got to do this or I have to have this. And then I really don't. Because once again, the psalm teaches me I don't need anything. All I need is what? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not. All I need is God. There's nothing else you will want if you have God in your life. And that's spirituality. Does that mean, well, money's evil? No. Does that mean I don't invest well? No. Remember, be shrewd. It means if you invest well, do what? Be a good manager and turn part of that over to the kingdom of God. Now we don't, once again, we don't like talking about money in the church, do we? And any time that I've ever done that, I always get some comments. That that is not spiritual. And money isn't spiritual, but God is spiritual. And God wants us to be good managers of the things that give it, including our wealth. That's what we're talking about here. Our wealth. And scripture tells us we should give a tenth of that. That's a portion. And yet, in the ELCA, we learned, at least this week, that giving is at 1.85% of our wealth. You imagine if we just went to 2.8%, just 1% increase, what that would do for, for the work of God's kingdom? That shows where we're at. And that's what this lesson is about. It's about being good managers of what God has bestowed upon us. Our wealth, our money, our time, our talents. God wants us to share that with others and not to hoard it or keep it. Now, I don't know if you watch hoarders on TV. Have you ever watched that thing? Mm. We talk about possessions, and these are people that have hoarded so much they can't even get into their home. <coughs> And if you think you are not able to do that, you're probably that far away from it. <laughs> but it's something that, once again, we like possessions. It's just our human nature. We like good things. We like things. And we dislike, usually, people. Things we think will make us happy, but they won't. And we found that out. I think we've shared that the lottery winners, when they win the lottery within two or three years, they're worse than they were before they won it. Because why? They get tied into the winnings and go on a big spending spree. God has called you to be a manager. A manager of what God has given you. And God, I don't know what God has given you. Only you know, but God knows what God has given you. God has been very good in my life, and I owe God a lot, and I still have a huge debt to pay, and I fall very short of that. Only you know what God has given you. Only you know what God has blessed you with. God has called you to be a manager, to step up and manage what God has given you, and that's what this text in Luke reminds us of, to be good managers of all that God has given us and to teach others to be good managers. You're good managers, but as the text kind of reminds us, we can always do better. God is calling you. Are you going to answer the call?
words of the Apostles' Creed, page 105, in the front part of the Red Book, the Apostles' Creed, page 105. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of Mary, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We turn our hearts to the prayers of intercession found on the back of your celebrate insert. We especially want to remember in our prayers. Carrie Ann is celebrating a birthday. As you know, Carrie Ann is in New York, um, but she celebrates a birthday, I believe, on the 23rd. Yes. So we want to remember her. We also want to remember Jason. We'll be adding Jason to our prayer list. That's Nicole's husband and uh, friend. He was hospitalized because of some gastrointestinal problems. Uh, so we ask that uh, we, re we remember Jason as well. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all God's good creation. God our Savior, you keep your church in faith and truth, accompany those preparing for baptism or affirmation of baptism. Enlighten preachers, teachers, seminarians, and all those who share your good news with the world. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Divine teacher, <coughs> you instruct your children to be responsible stewards of your creation. Show us how best to care for the earth and its resources and guide those who work to develop sustainable practices. God of grace, hear our prayer. prayer. Ruler of the nations, you direct those in authority. Give leaders wisdom and compassion so that all may live in peace. Inspire public servants <coughs> to follow the example of courageous leaders and safeguard the dignity of each person. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Helpers of the needy, you lift up those who are oppressed. Bring justice into economic and social systems that perpetuate property and hunger. Sustain food ministries, clothing banks, and emergency shelters. God of grace. Hear our Hear prayer. prayer. Sustainer and giver of life, you bless this congregation with abundance. Instruct us in the proper and faithful use of wealth and resources that we share generously. God of grace. Hear our prayer. God of glory, you gather your saints around your throne. Keep us thankful for the witness of those who have gone before us and bring us with them to the heavenly peace that has no end. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Almighty and most merciful God, we celebrate with Carrie Ann her birthday. We ask her blessings upon her as she continues her work and studies in New York. We pray for Jason as he continues to recuperate from a recent uh, illness and ask that you would be with him and Nicole uh, and the family that you bestow your love and grace and help upon them. We pray for all those that are listed on our prayer list, especially continuing to remember Tim Graybeck and family on the death of his wife and mother, that you would offer them comfort and consolation. I pray for my travels this week to Columbus, Ohio, to celebrate my 
50th anniversary of graduation from college. Be, be with us as we gather together to celebrate 50 years. We also remember all those that we named before you in our hearts today. God of grace, you are the Lord. Gather together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Gracious God, we offer these and all your prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We share that peace with one another. God bless you all. Thank you for being here and supporting us. Uh, the offering baskets are before you. This side is outreach. This side is uh, for the inside of this congregation. Uh, this Until um, November, the offerings in here will go for our block party, uh, where we're inviting all the people of Lake Park and Riviera Beach to come to uh, be a part of um, us and to share our love with them. I want to thank Erna Dell and the outreach committee and the council for supporting this. Uh, they're very excited about it again. Um, I think we're planning it on Sunday or on Saturday. Um, I had to put in twenty dollars because I thought it was on Saturday. <laughs> so, um, I'm still figuring out if that's the best time or Sunday. So, but I'll leave it up to them. On this side is is for our ongoing expenses, and just like yours, they keep going up. And we've been constantly been plagued with air conditioning issues. So anything you can do to help. And that arena is greatly appreciated. From the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you for what you've been doing for the block party, a lot of gifts that are coming in, and for our other side, not only your regular giving, but giving beyond for the air conditioning. Um, we don't, uh, I can't thank you enough for your support. Um, and it means a lot. Thank you so much. The prayers for the gifts are on page 107. Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen.
trade, he took bread and he gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and once again he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering our Lord's life, death, and resurrection, we await his coming again in power and in glory. And so our prayer is simply this. Come, Lord Jesus, and be our gift. And let these gifts to us be gifts. Our Lord's prayer. Amen.
500. Hymn number 500. <laughs> Thanks be to God.